With apparent support from Pope Francis, climate change and not abortion may soon take centre stage as the Catholic Church's predominant pro-life concern. In a recent opinion piece, the National Catholic Reporter, in an op-ed article titled Climate Change is Church's Number One Pro-Life Issue, it argued the Catholic Church should become a major player in educating the public to scientific data and in motivating people to act for change. Likewise, Pope Francis has declared his support for climate change education. If we destroy creation, creation will destroy us, Francis said. In his inaugural address, he highlighted the Catholic Church's mission of respecting each of God's creatures and respecting the environment in which we live, exhorting believers to be protectors of creation and God's plan inscribed in nature, protectors of one another and of the environment. According to the National Climate Assessment Report released by U.S. Global Change Research Program, climate change is expected to continue as emissions continue, which will increasingly put humans in danger. Through more extreme weather events, wildfire, decreased air quality and diseases transmitted by insects, food and water. NCR said the church is in a unique position to support scientists in raising awareness about climate change, and leading ethical discussions about the environment. Cardinal Oscar Andre Rodriguez Maradiaga outlined the problem during a conference at the Vatican. No sin is more heartless than our blindness to the value of all that surrounds us and our persistence in using it at the wrong time and abusing it at all times, he said. New York Times writer Andrew C. Revkin has also said that the church could play a vital role in, dis in the discussion about climate change. That is why the Roman Catholic Church, with its global reach, ethical framework and its social justice teachings, and as with all great religions, the ability to reach hearts and minds, can play a valuable role in this consequential century. Conspicuously absent from NCR's piece was any mention of abortion, which has historically been part of the Church's main pro-life agenda. Amid political turmoil in the Ukraine, tensions over religion are exasperating the tenuous circumstances inside the nation, with different churches taking sides and the Russian Orthodox Church reporting that it has been slighted by Ukrainian supporters. Metropolitan Ilarion, who, heeds the, who heads up the church's foreign relations department, said churches inside the nation have taken the Kiev government's side. Hilarion added that unlike rival churches inside the Ukraine, the Russian Orthodox Church had not taken a stance and has attempted to be a moderating influence in the conflict. Earlier this month, government officials and dignitaries inside the nation held a second round of talks on national solidarity in the eastern city of Kharkiv, according to the Washington Post. An inaugural meeting of government officials in Kiev produced little results, although diplomats in the West have encouraged dialogue between the interim government and the domestic critics. Hilarion was detained for two hours while attempting to cross into the Ukraine and said he thought the move was political with some religious motivations. The people who are now running Ukraine do not belong to the Russian, or the Russian Orthodox Church, Hilarion added, noting that while tensions inside the nation did not find their impetus in religious political divisions, somewhat reflect political differences. The Greek Catholic Church and the schismatic groups, rival Orthodox churches, have clearly identified themselves with the current regime, he noted. Hilarion's church recently issued a statement offering its services as a calming influence in the conflict within the embattled nation. After years of growth and prosperity in the United States, even the country's religions are starting to feel the effects of the economic recession. Many denominations have found themselves having to rent space in their buildings or even sell them outright. In many cases, the buildings have come into disuse, whether their former congregations have moved away from their location or away from organised religion entirely. Few denominations cite financial troubles as their reason for selling property, and some, like the Catholic Church, have already been offloading their unnecessary properties for, for years. The Jehovah's Witness have also been slowly selling off the 34 buildings they own near Brooklyn, their American headquarters since 1909, in order to construct a more modern facility in the town of Warwick, 60 miles to the northwest. 
On the other hand, the Episcopal Church in Manhattan has chosen to keep its properties, renting space out to everyone from the Ad Council to the Haitian Consulate in Boston, Massachusetts. The First Church of Christ Scientist has also gone the landlord route, leasing much of its headquarters office space to Northern University and tech companies. Harvey Gates, senior manager of real estate for the Christian Scientists, said that one of God's gifts is intelligence, and making the most of their assets is the smart thing to do. The Unitarian Church stands out as it wants to move not to downsize, but to move on from its roots among Boston's elite and to be part of South Boston, designated an, innov an innovation district, home to start-up tech and business arts companies. Given the changes that are happening in religion today, Unitarian President Reverend Peter Morales told the New York Times, we all have to move to the innovation district.